guys, my name is Elijah, welcome to 85 Studios. So we got to do a little bit of maintenance on the truck here, so this is going to be quick and pretty simple uh, cut and dry video. Um, we got to change the oil. Um, the oil hasn't been changed back in September when I bought it. That's the first thing I should have done, but I had engine problems that I needed to fix on it. I bought the truck for $500 off a wholesale lot. Uh, and they, they do not uh, do any maintenance on the vehicles so before they sell them anyway. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to change the oil. Alright, so on this particular vehicle it has, uh, this is a 96, uh, 1996 Ford F-250. This is a 90, 1996 Ford F-250. On this particular vehicle it has California emissions and it has very specific uh, things that have to be done to it in order to get it to uh, be emission worthy and that kind of stuff and to live up to those uh, California emission standards. Right here at the very top of the hood you'll see that there is a sticker. And you got your emissions sticker right here and what it's calling for it says uh, some of them will say right here on their uh, on their oil filler cap, some of them will say right here on this emissions sticker. And what this one says use SAE 10W30 American Petroleum Institute certified oils for gasoline engines. So what I did was I went ahead and I got my 10W30 and my filter. Now your well your auto parts store should be able to tell you what kind of uh, oil filter you have. Unfortunately, AutoZone kind of failed on this one because they told me that for every vehicle that they had looked up um, that was a 1996 F250 XLT like this, uh, they had 5W20 in their computer. And if I hadn't seen that sticker on there, then I would have been probably in trouble because I would have gotten 5W20 and not known. So, apparently this engine, this is a 7.5 liter V8, and this is the filter that you need. It is called a S8A, and this is the STP filter. I'm using uh, Castrol GTX high mileage because this engine, oh, okay, well, it doesn't turn on unless you turn the key on. This engine uh, is has 228,000 miles on it. We're going to pull that. You see that filter on there? There's something very important with that filter that you need to take a look at. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, check and make sure that this filter here physically looks like the filter that's on the engine. And we're going to have to back up the truck a little bit because it's not on flat ground. We need to get it over there. I actually prefer doing it on the rocks, but um, uh, let's see. How stable are we? I think, yeah, the front end's up a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, let's crawl up underneath here, or we might be able to see it from here. You see that filter down there? It's right there. I don't know what it says there on it. Okay, so without starting the engine, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in neutral and roll it back. Because I don't want it to get hot. And I've been letting it sit here, cooled down for a while. I'm just going to roll it back a little bit. Because, uh... It's not on level ground. So if you can put it in neutral, if you can put it in neutral and it will not roll anywhere, then you're on level ground. You want to be on level ground so that all that oil that's in that pan. So apparently it is on pretty level ground because I just dropped it in neutral and it ain't rolling. So yeah, we're okay. So, what we're going to do, uh, I want it more back than this. So I guess I do got to start it, but briefly. Oh, park brake was set, that's why. I just needed more room than this to be able to work with this. Right. So, what I want to do is I want to take this old, this new filter here, and I want to make sure that it's about the same size as this old filter. This old filter is just right here. 
but it's just going to be really annoying because it's going to hit, it's going to get on that, uh, it's going to get on this steering component here when I remove this. This is not the correct filter for this. You see this? This is a problem. This filter right here is smaller than this one. This is the wrong filter. So we're going to have to take this filter back and we're going to get the correct filter. It's a good thing to check this. This is why it's a very good thing to check this before you drain the oil. Make sure that this filter, the new filter and the old filter, look at look at how look at the difference in that filter. That's dead on there right there. Look how big how much bigger that new filter is than that old one. If we would have tried to put that on there, there's no way that that would have fit. So it's always a good idea to check that and make sure. And actually, I might be able to look on this one, this old filter, and see what kind, or get a number off of it maybe. This is a Valvoline filter. I might be able to turn it a little bit here without loosening it, without taking it off. Try to get a number off of it. Say so made in USA. What in the hell? Oh, look at the top then. <clears throat> okay, two strikes against AutoZone. Two strikes, AutoZone. First of all, you tried to tell me that my engine took 5W20, and then you sold me the wrong oil filter. So now i got to go back all the way up there to AutoZone and get the right oil filter. This thing is going to be too hot to change the oil for about an hour. We'll have to let it sit. It's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I've got the wrong filter, and I've got the right oil because I looked at the sticker and got the right oil. So AutoZone is not the place to go. Don't go to AutoZone. Uh, this filter really does not say on it what it is but we're gonna hop in the truck and we're gonna go get the right filter and we're gonna come back alright guys I mean I, I gotta discontinue the video for a second here I gotta put a cut in it because I've got to go to AutoZone or well, I gotta go to AutoZone take this filter back go get the correct filter and then come back and then I can continue my video because there's no way I can do it with this filter. They gave me the wrong filter. Alright, so cut and we'll be back. So, guys, um, we're going to have to continue this video tomorrow because, uh, guess what? Uh, I, we could not find a number on the oil filter at all. Um, and then I looked in my uh, owner's manual and uh, I managed to find the uh, oil filter we need it's called a uh, it's a motorcraft product it's called a FL18 or 1A uh, let me look at that again here give me just a second yeah we got a uh, the oil filter it needs is called a FL1HP um, and I uh, went up there to look and see if they had one and they don't got one and uh, they actually uh, don't have any in stock or anything that they can cross-reference to it so basically what's ended up happening is uh, I have to order I ordered the part and it'll be here about nine o'clock in the morning so this video is on hold until then but I don't mean we can't go do something fun in the meantime anyway uh, I'll be back in the morning so guys um, <clears throat> after lots and lots and lots of struggles to uh, find the right oil filter for this um, we did eventually find the right oil filter and uh, the oil filter for it let me see if I can if this will let me move it around any the right oil filter for it is actually uh, the one that I had originally um, and it was the right oil filter give me one second I'll be right back the oil filter I had for it was the right one originally. Um, it does take a pH 8, 
and it was correct in AutoZone's system. Um, just for your reference here, the VO1, this Valvoline filter that was on it, was a VO1 just like this one, except the oil in this truck had not been changed in so long that they had actually changed the design of the particular filter, the uh, oil filter, the VO1. So it was skinnier and it was um, taller. So that's what we're looking at here. <clears throat> and I love this truck because you don't have to jack it up. You don't have to have a jack to get up underneath it and change your oil, which is really cool. It's very windy out here also, by the way. So, that's a good thing we've got these uh, filters on it. Okay, so there's our oil drain plug. And we're going to go ahead and put this here. So, where is it? Um, you're looking over here, that's your drain plug right there. Okay, so we need, I think it's a 5 8 end wrench. And we can take that off and lower the oil. <clears throat> not drain the, or not lower the oil, drain the oil. So I'm gonna come under the front here like this, uh, cause it's easier to get to from the front. And I'm hoping that. Damn, I know my tools. Okay, so we're going uh, left to loosen, actually, not right. And we may need to use this exhaust as, or something as a way of getting some leverage here. Come on now. No reason why the oil plug, drain plug should be this tight ever. There's no reason. But I didn't do this oil filter change. Oh, that's because we're going the wrong way. Oh, and uh, use the round end. Don't ever use the other end. Um, you know, um, we were going the right way before. We were. Uh, we were going the right way. Yeah, there's no reason why the uh, oil filter should ever be this tight. The uh, plug, drain plug. Let me uh, go get a hammer. Uh, nope, we can get more leverage with this. We'll just use it instead. Now, it's a 5 8 uh, and I've got a longer... This should... Okay, we want to go that way, so we can loosen it. There we go. Now it's loosening up. Okay. This is simple. Drain the oil, and then take off the filter. I think I have a filter wrench around here somewhere, too. Let's see what this oil looks like. And yes, I don't have rubber gloves, but it's going to be nasty because the oil hasn't been changed. And I asked them uh, up at Pennzoil, or up at uh, Valvoline, when the last time that that uh, oil filter had actually changed design, and they told me that it was four years ago. It's 2018 now. Four years ago it changed design. So, what that basically means is that this oil has not been changed in four years. Maybe more. So, uh, I'm not sure what kind of uh, condition this engine is in. I see we got chunks in that oil here. That is ugly, ugly, ugly stuff. But yeah, we have fluid leaks. The oil looks disgusting. And pop that little bubble in it. 
See, this is why I didn't want to do it when it was real windy, because I didn't want my driveway getting all nasty. So yeah, we put the, this uh, this cap back in, and we're going to pull the filter over here. Let me get a rag or something to wash my hands with. Um, you don't want this thing overly extremely tight. You want it tight enough that it's not going to come out with vibration or whatever, but just about right there, maybe two, three fingers, right? And that's it. Because if you mesh it too tight, then you're going to end up uh, crushing this rubber seal right here. And if you crush the rubber seal, um, then it's obviously going to leak. And if you go too much further than that, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up stripping the threads on it, which means the thread, the plug will not thread in properly, and then you're probably going to be in trouble. Okay, so we have no um, oil on our driveway. i got to go get a rag and wash my hands before I grab that camera. And then we're going to come back here and grab the filter. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, change out the filter now. Um, it's pretty simple doing an oil change, uh, changing your own oil. A lot of people don't know how to do it. A lot of people are intimidated by it because they know that if uh, they don't change the oil out properly or they make a mistake, then the... Uh, the engine will be destroyed and that is true um, if you make it uh, if you put it back together to where it's leaking or if you and if you leak out all your oil or if you um, don't um, sorry my track is a mess getting up here trying to get the filter wrench I have a filter wrench in here somewhere or if you um, make the mistake with the oil filter or what have you, then you can actually end up with a leak that is uh, very, sorry, I'm, I'm very distracted here. Let me, uh, here, I'm going to stop the video for a second and then go ahead and I'll, I'll get this in there, okay? I'll pick it up in a second. Yeah, I spent a few minutes looking for my uh, filter wrench here and I can't seem to find it. So, um, what I'm going to do is I've got a pipe wrench here that should fit around it and grip it and take it off. Uh, if not, we're going to have to resort to more uh, aggressive manner or <laughs> more uh, uh, forceful measures. Um, so let me see what are we aiming at here. This is your oil filter right here. Uh, this right here. And this is pretty simple. Um, slosh pan, you know, over here so that it's under it and it's not going to go make an oil go everywhere. See if you can get it off by hand. Nope, you cannot get it off by hand, which actually might be a good thing. And open up your pipe wrench. See if you can get it around it. That's what this top area here is for. If you want to watch your water hoses. Ooh, that gas, that actually, that oil smells like gasoline a little bit. Sorry guys, it's a little more complicated. It's got to be complicated. Okay, it's turning. This is not what you normally use. They actually have filter wrenches for taking the oil filter off specifically. Specifically for taking oil filters off. So then, what you want to do is make sure, because the wind is blowing this way, I don't know, you can't see me. Okay, since the wind is blowing that way, that direction, make sure that your oil filter, your oil bucket is over it because it's going to drip some oil like that. And then make sure that you're getting the oil in the bucket. Now, remember, your oil filter, since it's at a downward angle like this, is going to have oil in it. So it's going to be full of oil when you take it off of here. Keep it upright if you can so that your oil doesn't get all over you or your driveway and you can hopefully get away with doing an oil change see there you go and there's going to be a little bit inside there see it's dripping onto the frame you want to make sure to see look how much oil is inside that there's a lot of here tilt you down a little bit here now look how much look at how much oil is actually inside this well let's see inside here a lot of oil inside that filter that'd be all over your driveway now what I do is I will wait for this to stop dripping and that way 
And I'm going to put my filter up here like this. See, it's upright to where I can grip it without getting oil all over me. I already got some on me, so I don't see the point. But Okay, um, now then, make sure that you do not have... Uh, let me make sure I'm... I switch on night vision. Make sure that you don't have the seal from the old oil filter on here. Make sure there's not a seal on there from it. Now, um, also, you can also tell if you have the seal on it by looking at that old oil filter make sure it has the seal on it because if you do a double seal on it and I'm talking about this seal right here if you do a double seal on that it's going to leak like a sieve and it's going to cause problems so now then what I'm going to do and what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the new filter on. You can see what I'm doing here. Put the new filter on. Just screw it on. It doesn't have to be extremely tight. As long as it seals and doesn't have the possibility of coming off with uh, vibration. Okay? Just get it hand tight. You don't have to use any tools on this. Just make sure that you don't have oil on your fingers when you do it because if you do then it's going to be real nasty. And if you can't turn it with one hand at this point, then you're good. You don't have to torque it down. Alright? Now last step. You got to pop the hood and pour the new oil in. And then we got to take our old oil to the recycle center so they can recycle it for us so that it doesn't go into the groundwater. We don't dump it on the ground ever. We take it to the recycle center and they will recycle it for us. Do not start the engine at this point. There's no oil in the in the engine. So pop the hood wherever the lever is. Alright, and our oil, our new oil, <coughs> pop the hood here, thank God for pipe wrenches guys, have random tools laying around in a toolbox, okay, and we're going to put some oil in here, and the actual filler cap is right here, and this engine actually recommends uh, 10W30, it's a 7.5 liter V8, 460 long block V8, and I'm trying to figure out an angle I can put this camera at where it's not going to be in the way of what I'm doing here. I will put it on the. We'll put it on the. Uh, I forgot to do one thing, and it's pretty important. So we got to take the oil filter off right quick. Um, when you put this new filter on, make sure that you take and put a ring of the new oil. You remember that seal I was telling you about? Take this back off. Remember that seal I was telling you about? That gasket? So I've put a ring of the new oil around this so that hopefully it will seal better and then we just screw it back in except now that oil filter is all covered with oil so it may take a little bit to get it in but remember if you can get it just two hands tight don't over tighten these otherwise you have a hell of a time getting them off the next time you have to change your oil, right? Alright, so we're ready to add oil to the engine now, finally. And I'm getting oil all over my tripod. Hopefully I don't get it all over my camera. And I'm going to set this over here on the battery. Because from this angle, you can actually see what I'm doing. Got the lid off of it. <clears throat> 
And this is one of those easy pour ones, uh, but I think I still need a funnel, so let me see if I can find a funnel. Make sure that the funnel's clean-ish, at least. Then we'll go ahead and pour in the oil. And it takes exactly five quarts, and that's exactly what I have here. So hopefully I don't spill nothing. And it should just go in smoothly into the oil pan. And since this engine has 290,000 miles on it, we're using high mileage. And we're using my favorite brand, which is Valvoline. Looks like that's it. That's it. So then we can use this when we go to the store we can drain our used oil into this into this from our pan or from our drain pan okay I got you guys come with me all right So yeah, I put this on and I shouldn't have put it on because I need it for that oil that's under there in this pan. Look how black that is. Okay, I was worried a while ago that this oil was going to look like a milkshake, uh, chocolate milk. But it actually looks pretty decent um, because what we ended up with, uh, we got low compression in, in cylinders two, uh, three and four, I mean, and we've got um, so I'm going uh, to set you up here, look at now, see now we put the old oil inside that new oil container and we can take it back to the auto parts store where we got the new oil and we can turn it back in and return it, it's used oil okay now what you want to do is you want to look through this and make sure because the uh, if there's anything heavy in your oil um, it will sink to the bottom of this pan. And you want to look very carefully. Make sure you don't have any metal shavings or anything like that in there. <sighs> it smells strong like gasoline though, guys. I'm thinking uh, there's no water in it. There's a little bit of sand and particulate. But you want to watch out for metal shavings and that kind of thing. So then we're going to check the oil. Make sure that the oil is full. And it's on full. But let's dip it again and make sure. Yeah, the oil's on full. It's above the little lines there, the little mesh lines there. Okay. Last thing to do is get everything out of the way. And since I've got a remote starter on this, I'm going to go ahead and do the remote start. And we're going to check the oil pressure. Um, and make sure that we got oil pressure so we'll do that now since we're full on oil and we'll also check to make sure there's no leaks that's my fuel pump okay first off oil pressure is normal okay and let's make sure we got no leaks I think we're good. Successful.
some oil change. Alright, let's uh, clean up the tools, put them away. Alright, let's uh, clean up the tools, put them away, back in the toolbox, close the hood, and uh, take our used oil back to get it recycled. That oil was very black. Very black. Yes, by the way, guys, I just turned 33 yesterday. 33 years old. And went ahead and uh, made a decision for myself. I am officially quitting smoking. I don't know what this guy wants, but he's speaking in Spanish and I can't understand him. Give me just a second, I'll pause the video, okay? And I'll be right back. Anyway, uh, he's, he's asking me if I'm a mechanic and if I work on cars. I do not work on other people's cars. Um, I work on my cars. But I, I like to do tutorial videos and stuff like that. <clears throat> he's saying there's a problem with something on the dash or what have you. Um, I don't really know, but I'm going to go lock my door. I'll be right back. I'm going to set you right there for now. I am back. Like a vertebrae. Alright, so, should be able to drive the truck. I just set the tools and everything right here in my driver's seat like this, which is a bad habit. And this is my light, my tripod, my new light, my tripod. So I need to move those probably. I am going to turn on the air conditioner because I am hotter than a firecracker. And yes, I did wipe down the tools. Put the tray in. This goes in there. I don't like greasy tools. So, we're going to take the uh, used oil in, and we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to, we're going to recycle it. So, I'll be back. I, uh, alright, I'm not going to show you uh, the part about going to the auto parts store and recycling the oil, um, because I'm sure that's something that you guys can come up with on your own, um, know how to do on your own. But um, basically what you end up uh, doing is you go in there and you tell them you got used oil. Usually they recycle it for free. They've got a great big container they can put it in. And uh, other than that, you're pretty much squared away. Um, guys, uh, I like the tutorial videos. I'm going to be... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, recording a, another video tonight that's going to be a somewhat different video for you guys. It's going to be a, a paranormal video. There's a place that's called Hookman's Road. I'm going to be going out there tonight. <clears throat> I'm probably going to edit this video and then go out there uh, tonight. And then uh, I'm going to fly on the lens trying to get to my camera. I don't know what they want, but stupid bugs. But uh, I need you guys to pray for me and uh, send lots of love my way because uh, this location is terrifying. It's just like the other location. Um, it's just, it's really freaky. So, uh, I mean, if you can send out some prayers, um, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm afraid of the place and I am going to face my fears. So, yeah. I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Please uh, hit like and uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will catch you in the next video. It's going to be a nighttime paranormal exploration out in the middle of nowhere, and actually I found another location that's potentially maybe abandoned, but I don't know. I have to go check, and that's also what I'm going to be doing here in a few minutes, heading out that way to check it out. So, I will see you guys later. Peace.